Hello everyone, Lord of Flames here, and it's time to react another video. And I got this another request for watching an SFM creepypasta video. And I know which one sounds scary. Called It Has No Face. Here we go. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I mean, I know I had to like if I would just watch Christmas videos for this month for December, but having a little bit that the scene has tales about the strange and bizarre. My story is about how my ski mask saved my life and continues to save my life to this very day. Can I, can you see how I'm trying to talk? Anyways, what I mean is that the looks of this scene looks like taking place at winter time. So I believe at winter time for Christmas, I'll seem fine with this. So here we go. Late in December, I was traveling oh, north yeah. from California to my home state of Oregon. Nothing fancy. I was just going to visit the family for the holidays. On my way north, I had a small snowstorm. Nothing awful, just a lot of snow falling at once. I wasn't worried about the small increase of snow at first, considering I had snow tires installed before I started my long journey home. Well, I you did, should. However, get a little hesitant to drive when the snow started to really come down. Yep, yeah, you should uh, the get large there amount of early. Snow coupled with the large you should get there early, folks. Littering the ground as I traveled higher. If you the try to, uh, to look at your weather app or the weather channel for first, just in case, very fast. And there it's gonna be like a storm or storm weather coming by in an hour, the so you need to be fast give my without being a uh, slow down by a weather or worse, just stop working altogether. I scanned as much of the landscape as I could, but there were no buildings in the immediate area. The only other option I had for my predicament was to keep driving and hope there was a town or exit nearby that I could take in order to escape from the storm. I must have been driving for at least an hour before I saw a sign up ahead indicating how far the closest city was. My heart sank a little when I read 162 miles. What? As it flew by my windshield and vanished into the snowy night. That's not good, folks. At this point, the snow was beating against my windshield, and I knew I wasn't going to last 162 minutes, let alone miles. The digital clock on my radio read, 1.21 a.m. And I decided that the next turnoff I saw, I would take and hope that I could find a neighborhood that will produce some results on my current endeavor. My thought process was either freeze to death in my car or stay the night at some random person's house. Weighing the two options in my head, I picked the only thing a sane person would pick and tried to find a house. Because they have heaters and fire or place or whatnot. Another 30 minutes flew by and still no luck finding a place to pull off. Just when I was starting to lose hope, I saw a turn off in the distance. A small shape started to make its way closer into my headlights. And on further inspection, it was revealed to me that there were two wooden poles that possibly belonged to a fence. You know something strange? Why there's when not any the like between street, the wooden poles, street lights the beneath, or uh, just road lights rocky, around? Rough. I mean, do they even have like those? I was traveling on gravel. She forgot. I didn't drive for too long before I started to see a small cabin creep into my field of view. Oh my god. No, 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 no. This seemed to be in no. very good shape. Shut up! That's the house you shouldn't go. The looks of that house. Covered with snow, but no lights inside. Nothing out the outside. Like, and no, nothing. Just nothing. Silence. You shouldn't go there, folks. It's not because of your bothering someone, but the looks of the house, it looks a bit abandoned, so don't go there. Because you know what I mean, like in horror movies these days, if you go to an abandoned house, or a random abandoned building, you get attacked by a monster or a killer or whatnot. Don't be stupid, okay? I parked my car under a tall, wild-looking tree that took residence on the cabin's front lawn. Getting out of my car, I immediately grabbed my extra jacket and put it on. 
also pulling the ski mask I wore around my neck up over my ears to keep heat around my face. After putting my cap snug on my head, I trudged up to the cabin. As I traveled through the cold, windy night up to what I felt was my salvation, I immediately regretted not getting any gloves for my hands. Despite the irritation I had with my hands, my face and the rest of my body were comfortably warm, so I didn't have much room to complain. I stuffed my frozen hands deep into my pockets and continued my journey across the cabin's lawn. As I made my way to the door, I noticed something a bit odd. There was no indication of life anywhere. Mm-hmm. There wasn't even a car in the front yard. No car either. Yep. Taking my right hand out of my pocket. Looks abandoned. I knocked three times. Waiting patiently before saying, Hello? Is anybody there? I'm sorry to bother you so late at night, but I need a place to stay for a few hours. Nothing answered my plea for help. So I knocked three more times on the door, hitting my knuckles harder against the aged wood of the entrance. Hello? I said, again a little louder before continuing with, I'm not here to rob you or anything, I just need a place to stay for the rest of the night. I promise I will be gone by sunrise. As I finished my last sentence, I touched the ornate metal door handle, noticing that the door seemed to be unlocked. I said in a loud voice, I'm coming in now. If there's anybody in there, please, please let me know. I pressed the metal lever down, finding it a bit odd that the door was unlocked, and opened the door with little resistance on the other end, closing it behind me with about the same resistance despite the fact the door was really, really old. Looking around the area, I noticed the cabin had five rooms. Oh. The living room, which was the largest. I a saw small it. Kitchen, oh, I saw an Easter egg. Room, what I assumed were ah, two small beds. I knew it. Back. Fred Bear Plutch no and the hedges moved. Inside this cozy Only cabin, a second. It almost perfectly dark if my eyes weren't already adjusted to the darkness from outside. I decided the best thing to do would be to search for a light switch, so I took out my phone and turned on the flashlight app to scan the walls. Of course, my scan produced no results, however, and at the risk of losing precious battery power on my phone, I decided the best option would be to turn off the light and put my phone on airplane mode. Before turning off my light, I studied the paintings hanging on the wall that I glossed over in the initial scan. Each painting that crossed my sight was just typical landscapes of harbors, things like that. There was a painting that looked like a fox hunter, something similar, but other than that it was just typical paintings you would see hanging on the walls around an elderly person's home. There was one painting, however, that did catch my attention. The painting was small and consisted of what looked like two adults, a mother, father, a teenage girl, and a small child. The family captured in that painting were wearing what looked like Victorian-era clothing. I'm only guessing about the clothes. I mean, they could have been from the 1800s or early 20th century. Oh my. The point is that the clothing was very ornate and regal. There's something really disturbing about the image, though. What? The faces of each member of the family appeared as if they were smoothed over with clay. Uh, it's kind of hard to describe. Oh uh, no! The three family no. members looked like they had no facial no. features. Why no. Why did they do this to Slenderman, I mean, folks? Instead of the normal ones, they ruined Slenderman had, again. People in the painting for having him a family. Of Don't just stop that. Where normally you you're ruining Slenderman already. Nose again. Mouth. Like how many? How many times you had to ruin Slenderman? The person in the painting that didn't Millions. have a blank face was the teenage girl which appeared to be normal for a teenage girl. In fact, she was actually quite breathtaking. I pulled myself away from the painting to take a glance at my phone for the first time. My phone indicated that it was past 2 o'clock in the morning, so I decided so why to go back to the only room one girl has to a face. Occupied. To my relief, the room was vacant. Besides a I have a theory if she is somehow a survivor. 
it won't but those three families died or some way that to to, that lost their faith, which suppose. means they die, and she survived. Although there was From no some of sort of attack, besides a chimney, I don't know. The rooms were bearable enough that I figured I could just bundle up in my clothes under the covers in order to stay warm. I was only going to be there for a few hours anyway, so there wasn't much point in starting a fire, plus the people who own the cabin would be back tonight considering how late it was. I hopped into the worn-out bed, facing the open door next to the other door, which I assumed was a closet. He's wearing I boots, my folks. Completely up over my face There's a rule sure that you cannot wear somewhere. shoes or boots on the, the bed, stay. nor the couch. Pulling the fabric of my mask down slightly, I set the alarm on my phone for 4.30 a.m., and put it back down on the nightstand. I covered my face again and bundled up tightly with the sheets, closing my eyes and letting Dreamland take me away until I woke up after what only felt like minutes. How many? To the sound of scratching. My body froze as I heard the noise over and over again, softly coming from the closed door. I tried to relax, thinking that... All the noises that I heard was just probably a rat or some other animal that was spending the night in the closet while the cabin's owners were away. Oh! Quietly, I shifted onto my back. I noticed my mask, a I hand. A little slit appeared. An arm. A small window to look out at what was there. But I know it. I laid on the bed, stiff as a board, with my cap and my mask covering my face in such a way that it acted almost like a visor giving me a small peek at what was in the darkness. Thankfully, my eyes were still adjusted to the dark, which gave me a small amount of reassurance as I continued looking in the direction of the scratching noise. The scratching continued, louder and louder for what seemed like minutes until, just like that, it stopped. It stopped. Like every horror movie does. Silence filled the room again, but and what happens it next? Wasn't a safe kind Jump of scare? Wow! The deafening silence in the room was foreboding, ominous. I don't know. Sort of silence. That's why they do in horror movies. The vacuum of sound in the air was without the just of that opening the a door slowly and you show it. I don't know. Just when I began to calm myself down, the doorknob to the closet began to jiggle and turn very slightly. My heart was racing out of my chest as I saw and heard that knob turn. And every inch of my body wanted to just bolt out of the bed and out of that cabin before whatever was on the other side of that door got out after me. I laid perfectly still on the bed, despite the fact that I had a cocktail of adrenaline, nerves, and instincts telling me to get the hell out of there. My eyes widened as the door to the closet opened slightly, and I saw what looked like a dried head attached to an elongated neck pop out of the opening accompanied <gasps> by a skeletal body oh my god the thing that was emerging it's from the, the rake folks on all fours out of the doorway and slowly or is those uh, window goes from until seen. dawn i had never been more frightened in my whole entire life as the thing stood up almost touching the ceiling of the cabin and looking down in my direction the creature stood there, studying me, as I peeked through the thin slits in my mask. Pure terror oh, swirling around frick. my mind as I glanced up at the body of the creature. Looking at the creature's Jeez, skeletal face, you forgot to put a I sensor that on. It had no eyes Dude. in its head, which led me to believe that it couldn't even see me, even though I could see it. Just when the idea of not being able to see me started to give me a little comfort. The I mean, began to speak. Strange. I don't know. I'm kind of dumb. The creature I mean, I mean. continued to watch me, and then spoke again. It had no fear of me. It continued to say in a hoarse tone as it began to breathe loudly. Somehow he speak a bit English, ripping down like us. My bed. If he is mostly once a Being human like us, but became hand, some type of, of windigo like brain to go into complete going a bit until dawn. The only thing that stopped me from jumping up was the thought that maybe the creature believed I was dead or asleep and wouldn't attack. How can it not fear? How can it not fear me? <gasps> 
The thing said through clenched teeth before loudly gasping and suddenly pulling back with its mouth open in an expression that almost resembled a fear. It has no face. The thing whispered to itself as it continued to back away. It has no face. Wow, he's afraid of Slenderman, time, folks. Louder than before and slightly afraid more. Afraid of Slenderman. Unnerved. No face. The creature shouted as it backed off further away from Which the is, bed. Which uh, is, of course, the Slenderman is not in Quickly before calming down and slowly returning to the side of the bed. Jeez. Leaning over me slowly, the creature continued to look at me before softly beginning to breathe on my face. Jeez. I could smell its foul breath Ew. through my mask. The smell was so it's like the person having him brush his teeth or wash his stench. mouth for like a decade. My mind, I made the choice to keep motionless and did not do or say anything that would compromise whatever illusion I was giving the thing that was currently studying me. The creature breathed on me again. I softly. would just punch that creature right in the face could only be described as and try rotten. to knock it out and it's try to just strangle it perfectly motionless as possible without just running away being Stay. stupid so it could chase me the thing whispered at me again leaning in close to me to the point where I could see and smell its decaying flesh the creature slowly reached for me oh no its hand <laughs> slowly towards my face. Luckily, it's not 3D. I'm not wearing those 3D, thong, 3D glasses. I feel my situation becoming more and more dire. I thought that this was it for me. The creature would kill me tonight. Or take me away and torture me, then kill me, and no one would know what happened to me. No one would find my body out there, and no one would know my story. Because you're telling us right now. I could feel tears start to well up in my eyes as I thought of everyone I ever loved being yanked away from me in this one very moment. No face. No face. No face. I will freaking punch you one in the jaw, you ever freaking, to my face. you freaking. I could hear the anguish in the creature's voice as Frank. it continued chanting over and over as it reached for me. As its long, bony hand crept only centimeters away from my face. I mean, the looks of the guy's, this I creature's body worst. looks like skinny, thin, the last thoughts I would ever like a bone, like, people I, I would could try to just grab that hand and just as I thought my life was it. all over. As hard as I can. A sudden loud noise erupted from the room, filling the ear closest to the nightstand with a flood of beeps. I mean, how fast or strong is this thing out. is? As the noise continued, the creature threw itself back against the wall, shrieking uncontrollably in terror as it stumbled back towards the closet. I was dumbstruck for a second, before the thought came to me that I had set my alarm at 4.30, mm -hmm. which must have been the source of all the noise. Fight back time. I jumped out of the bed, Payback grabbed time, my phone, I mean. and pointed the lit up screen at the monster as ah, the alarm continued the light to ring loudly. It's too bright. I haven't loudly seen a light for a decade. Only I stuck in the darkness for a long time. The light ah, is burning my eyes my like a sun. And put it on strobe in order to disorientate the monster further. No face. No face. No face. Yeah, you no better face. crawl away, dude. The creature shrieked at me as it withdrew to the safety of the closet. I continued to shine my light on the creature, and for the added effect, I started playing loud music as I continued to jab my phone into the monster's direction like a lion tamer. The thing threw itself into the dark recesses of the closet, and I shoved the door back, locking it after I slammed it closed. The shrieks coming from the monster started to get fainter and fainter, like it was almost retreating deeper into the house how deep is this no like face. how deep is no face no face like how large is this hall or this room further that further the, this creature is going to around the house i mean i don't know after hearing the last retreating words of the thing that terrified me the whole night i bolted from the cabin at breakneck speed jumping into my car and floored it off the gravel road whoa that type of turn whoa whoa i was shaking all over as i drove and when I pulled my ski mask further down to expose my skin, I was as white as the snow that littered the ground. 
I was so frightened by the whole experience as soon as I pulled into the first town I saw, I parked my car. Oh, well, luckily your own type of reaction is not like high. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, that ending where that final girl that I was just laughing while uh, the life. truck is being uh, driven away with her. Car, I don't know. In the parking lot of a convenience store, I couldn't help but start to laugh a little in between my fits of crying. A I got bit like my that. ordeal without so much as a scratch on me. Well, aside from the mental scratches. I was fine. I was alive, and I didn't have to worry anymore. After I finished with my whole episode of crying and laughing like an insane person, I entered the store, sniffling and wiping away the rest of my emotions. As I continued into the store, the cashier looked up at me and traced my direction with his eyes before continuing with what he was doing. The store was mostly empty, aside from an elderly couple. I was the only customer in there. A rough night, the cashier said with one eyebrow cocked up while he scanned my items. You have no idea. That's the cheapest said, look of a the store. At the sun breaking over the horizon. I uh, noticed you looked a bit upset uh -oh. when you came in. Demo man, you left what your, uh, your you one of your bombs in the store. It's going to blow up, up any second. computed how much I owed him. Looking at the young man behind the register, he seemed to be a little younger than I was, although that didn't say much because even though I'm 22, I do look younger than my actual age. I looked at the cashier's name tag for a second before feeling that I had nothing to lose by telling him about the night I just had. The small name on his ID read Evan. Chose Evan. And as I finished telling him, if he used that name, uh, that type of, if there was like a model say like, "Hello, my name is Evan." I expected Evan. him to burst out there laughing or say that I was the best liar he had ever talked to. Instead of doing any of that, Evan just stood there, his skin milk white, as he stared at me with an expression so horrifying. Ha! Huh. Oh, he he's not going to believe that he him. Had just witnessed something get run over by a train or something. Oh, reminds Evan, me of that right? movie that Sam Raimi I made. His eyes while we both just stood there, silently. What? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just uh... Evan began to say before his thoughts trailed off due to a new feeling that we were both being watched. I began to feel eyes burn into the back of my head before turning around to see the old couple. I glanced at what Whoa, I was wow, before. Whoa! What happened to your name? The old couple possessed the same horrified expression that Evan had just a few mm, seconds Never mind. Ago. They must have heard the whole story I told. After huh. a few moments of silence, the old couple asked me what I knew about the cabin, to which I couldn't really say. I gave them the best description I could about what I saw. The couple proceeded to tell me about the cabin, how long it had been there, and that it was haunted by a presence so terrifying that the place was condemned and left to rot away after so many people disappeared there. They told me that no one who ever stayed in that cabin has ever been seen alive again. Ooh. That they've ever been seen at all after their visit. So this is like an urban legend. One of my best friends stayed the night in that cabin. I've been <gasps> sad quietly as he stared off into the distance, but continued his thoughts with, I refuse to go into the cabin. I knew something bad would happen if we went. I tried so hard to convince him that the dare was stupid and to not go in, but he refused to be labeled as a chicken and continued with the dare. Evan's eyes really? began to water as he continued with his story. <laughs> I never saw him again after that night. I kept calling his house, but his parents still couldn't find him. We put up flyers, billboards, but we never had any luck. After a few days, we contacted the police and I told him about the cabin. Evan began to choke down his tears as he clenched his fist. They found him in the basement of that cabin, sprawled out on the floor. His eyes were ripped out of his face. His nose had been removed and his lips were sliced clean off. Oh my god. When they found him, he was naked with an incision in the bottom of his ribcage, down to his pelvis in the oh. middle of his body. Oof. All of his organs were extracted from his body, and to add insult to injury, his genitals were sliced clean off. Oh my fuck! Oh fuck! Oh my the worst part god! When the police did the autopsy on the body, 
They found that he was alive during the whole process. What? He was alive? Evan winced as he remembered the whole gruesome sight and said, There's no way for anyone would survive that attack. There was no DNA evidence to convict anybody. They didn't find the tools that made the incisions, and they didn't find anything. Evan clenched his fist tighter on the table before the old man listening to our conversation put his hand on Evan's shoulder to reassure him that it was going to be all right. As he comforted Evan, he looked at me and said, People have been disappearing from the area for decades. Maybe even centuries for all we know, but the bodies always end the same gruesome way. I don't care who you are. No one deserves something like that happening to them. They should just torch that damn place to the ground. The old lady joined her husband's side. And I mean, they should. Him. It's her been a decade, so why'd they have to do it? If your story is true, you should consider yourself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. In all my years of living, you are the only one to go into that cabin and emerge alive. I mean, they should, like, have the all the neighbors, everyone who live in that town, she spoke to me. go to that abandoned house and just burn it to the ground. After hearing the old woman's words, I realized that Evan said the body of his friend was found in the basement, which would explain why the monster's voice got fainter. That, so it, it was the, the basement. basement. My phone hadn't gone off. I quickly paid for my items and left the store, more troubled now than I was when I entered. Feeling drowsy due to the lack of sleep and constant adrenaline rush caused by the whole terrible ordeal. I decided to go to a hotel and spend my day sleeping and relaxing to get my mind off things. E apartment? Oh that night hey. I sat on the bed rent? in my hotel room. Do you have and rent? looked at the two items that saved my life. Where's my money? In one hand, I gripped on my ski rent. mask, which hid my face from that terrible monster. In my other hand I held my cell phone, which scared away the horrible beast that could have killed me. I decided from that day on, I would always wear my ski mask to bed. It saved my life. That's the least I can do for it. The recent brush with death I just experienced had taught me that life is far too precious to waste, so I decided to ask my best friend Samantha out on a date, and things worked out perfectly. Samantha and I were together for two years before I recently asked her for her hand in marriage, which she said, yes. Part of me will never ever forget that awful night, and because of it, not only have I been wearing my ski mask to bed every night since then, I've also made it a priority not to live in any type of house that has a basement. As yeah, basement measure, these days, folks. Every door People are bed. always pain, afraid of the basement lately. You be too careful. Like, if you're Despite going up the stairs, leaving it but until you turn off the lights, you hear noises to be coming behind as you. We continue our journey until you life. hear it loud and loud and loud that is right the way towards you, coming right towards life. you. And I'm so lucky to be with Samantha. Or a hand coming out one of those stairwells. I don't know. There's just one thing that bothers me, and I think I might just have to blame my imagination, but what? sometimes... Wait, what? When I wake up at night... When it's really, really quiet. Sometimes, I'll hear soft scratching noises. Also, and oh, no. I think it's just paranoia, but I swear. Sometimes I hear something whisper. No face. From inside my closet. Oh my f uh, twisted ending. If he is actually just hearing things, I mean I don't know if that creature was in the closet this whole time. But how? What location did the main character just live in? Or move on? Or I mean move in. I don't know. They didn't like just Well I mean one took the two miles, a little bit nearby to that house, so, uh, somehow that creature can have sense on where the, this character 
is right now. So it follows him and found him. Like two years for that? I'm not sure. I mean, I don't know. So, that's pretty much it for this reaction videos, folks. I mean, it was terrified a bit. Okay, what the heck is that thing? What the thumbnail is that? Okay, that looks sick. I mean, not me, awesome or anything. No, 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 no. Not thumbnail. Okay, what I'm talking about that other video? Okay, never mind. <sighs> I hope you enjoyed this video, folks. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more. And if you want a, re a video you want me to react, go ahead, leave a comment down below. If it had to be some Christmas videos because it is December already, go ahead. And I'll check it out which one will go first. This is Lord of Flames here. I'll see you guys next time. Bye, folks. Have a wonderful day.